So, congenital heart disease patient. So, children. It is not necessarily always children. They can grow up to adulthood also without uh, realizing that they have a problem. As I told you, the examples of the two cases I had uh, encountered in my career. So, children with congenital heart disease undergoing non-cardiac surgery have increased risk of perioperative morbidity and mortality, but not all of them, depending upon the nature and severity of the heart disease. So, the highest risk factors are complex diseases, poorly compensated physiology, and presence of long-time diseases. And intermediate risks are dependent on the surgery, major surgery, emergency surgery, or children under three years of old, preoperative problems, ASA physical status 4 and 5. Now, what is the physiology of different types of circulation? This is the first basic concept that we all should have a clear idea about. One first is called the normal series circulation. The normal circulation can be considered as a separate systemic and pulmonary circulation working together in series. Then parallel or balanced circulation, instead of the pulmonary and systemic being separate entities, they communicate with each other and function physiologically as being in parallel. So, this is the way you can understand this. In normal circulation, the deoxygenated blood comes to the right atrium, goes to the right ventricle, goes to the pulmonary artery, goes to the lung. You can see all of them are deoxygenated blood depicted in blue. Once it goes to the lung, it gets oxygenated, it becomes red, comes to the LA, goes to the LV, aorta. So, oxygenated blood is going to the entire body. Here, deoxygenated blood is brought back to the heart. So, this is the serious, serial thing that is going on round and round. So, this is called the circulation in series. Whereas, in a patient with ASD, VSD, or PDA, there is a communication between the two sides. It is not a separate chamber uh, which are not communicating. Here, it is communicating right atrium to the left atrium in ASD, right ventricle to left ventricle in ESD, aorta to pulmonary artery. So in all these things, when the deoxygenated blood comes here, initially because the <coughs> uh, right atrium, left side pressures are more, you will find that blood will be going from the left side to the right side. But once uh, the right side pressures increase or go beyond the left side pressure, the circulation may change direction and it starts uh, getting mixed up with that. The same thing can happen in all these things. And so this is what is called the parallel circulation. So the examples of children will balance or parallel circulation who may be present at infants or large unrepaired atrioventricular septal defects. And these infants are predominantly left to right side flow. So initially, they will not have any cyanosis because only the oxygenated blood is mixing with the deoxygenated blood in a larger volume. And other examples are children with modified Blalock dissection, which is done as a temporary palliative measure for uh, increasing the pulmonary blood flow, then bronchus arteriosus, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Now, there is a, another more difficult congenital heart disease, which is called the single ventricle circulation. Some of the congenital heart diseases which are not amenable to full anatomical correction, that is, you cannot have a biventricular repair resulting in a normal TV circulation. But they are also called the univentricle or a single ventricle children, where there is an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance and intrathoracic pressure, which can compromise the pulmonary blood flow. So, this is the picture of a single ventricle and a normal ventricle. How with normal, all of you know how it is coming and going. So from the body, it comes to the right side, gets oxygenated, goes to the lungs, and all these things. Whereas in a single ventricle, there is only a single chamber. So, both the deoxygenated and the oxygenated blood they mix up here and then they travel to both parts of the all parts of the body, including the lungs. So, children with a CVC presenting for non cardiac surgery can be grouped into three categories non operated patients, 
with previous palliative surgery and previous corrective surgery. So these are the non-operative patients, as I told you, maybe so most of the time they are asymptomatic and the, the defect is very, very minor and uh, they may not uh, have problem. But it may be sometimes, rarely, a patient who has grown up with metrology of phallo, they go into adult mode. There are reports in literature where women with tetralogy of phallo have undergone mm -hmm. uh, grown up to the stage of getting married and they become pregnant and coming for delivery and uh, tetralogy of phallo diagnosed only during the time of delivery. So such cases are also there. But all these things indicate that they are all well compensated. So whether they are non-operated or whether they have grown up with the congenital heart disease, as I told you, this will be uh, the least bother of the patients. They will not have much problem. So anesthetist should obtain information about the cardiac lesion, its altered physiology, and the implications to anesthesia. Now, as she rightly said, we have to classify the risk in these patients. <clears throat> the factors which are there are, as I told earlier, it's a complexity of the heart disease, and well-compensated patients with THP can undergo elective operations as a low-risk procedure or low-risk patient, whereas poorly compensated patients are naturally very high-risk patients. And physiological status can be altered by if the patient already is in cardiac failure or they have severe pulmonary hypertension, they have arrhythmias, they have cyanosis, they have coagulopathy. It's another important uh, condition. I think we are, did you mention about that? Coagulopathy. And complexity of heart disease. Mm -hmm. So single ventricle physiology, balanced circulation physiology, cardiomyopathy, and rarely congenital aortic stenosis. So these are considered as very complex heart diseases. Those with a univentricle, those with a balanced circulation where there is a mixing of right and left side, cardiomyopathy, congenital cardiomyopathy, or rarely severe aortic stenosis of birth itself. These are considered as complex heart diseases, which are all high risk cases. Now, how do you assess these patients preoperatively? You must understand what exactly is the defect, and then including the anatomy, physiology, and all those things before anesthetizing. These are the questions that you should ask. Knowledge of the underlying lesion and type of circulation. The balance between systemic vascular resistance and the pulmonary vascular resistance is a very, very important uh, factor which you all should know thoroughly. Uh, in cases where there is a balanced or parallel circulation, where there is a mixing. So if the SVR is high, then the right side blood cannot enter the left side and uh, dilute or deoxygenate the oxygenated blood. On the contrary, if the pulmonary pressures are high and systemic pressures become low, as during induction or maintenance with high percentage of volatile anesthetic agent, where systemic vascular resistance drops, then the pulmonary pressures become dominant and the mixing will reverse from left to right, it will become right to left, more deoxygenated blood will come to the systemic circulation and patient will start developing uh, <clears throat> uh, cyanosis. I still remember one of my examiners when I went for my MD exam, they, I had a case of VSD and it was a right to left shunt and uh, I mean left to right shunt and patient did not exhibit uh, any cyanosis during uh, examination and uh, with the quality of murmur and the location, I made the diagnosis of VSD and I presented the case and the examiner had come from Velour CMC and he asked me, Mm -hmm. Those days we had only type and tone for induction. So he said, You are inducing the patient. You are, uh, your friend is giving type and tone. Patient is breathing 100% oxygen. As he finishes the induction dose of uh, type and tone, patient suddenly becomes blue. What will you do? And what is the reason? That is the question he asked me, which I still remember. And I told him, Sir, the, the patient would have gone in for. Systemic vascular resistance decreased because of the type and tones. 
and his pulmonary pressures would have been higher <clears throat> because of the left to right shunt and the uh, pulmonary pressures would have exceeded the systemic vascular pressure and the shunt could have reversed. He appreciated me and uh, told me <clears throat> that's the correct answer. So this is very, very important. That is the reason why nowadays we use drugs like ketamine or other drugs like phenylephrine to keep the SVR high to prevent this shunting occurring between the pulmonary circulation to the systemic circulation. Okay? So this is the first and foremost thing. <clears throat> What is the balance between SVR and PVR? Are the oxygen saturations what to be expected of the lesion? And any long term complications which are already present, evidence of any recent upper or lower respiratory tract infections <coughs> because the changes in airway reactivity and PVR may be overly tolerant. <coughs> And these children may have difficult venous access sometimes. So you have to assess whether they have a proper venous access or just whether they have the periphery or whether they have to go for a central access. And what are the routine drug therapies that they are taking? That also we have to <coughs> look out and make a note of that. And uh, sedative premedications, we usually avoid if these uh, children are in distress or have a uh, uh, it's a problem of respiratory depression causing increase in PVR and uh, or, uh, causing a reduction in HVR. All these things can happen with sedative premedication. And the endocarditis prophylaxis. All these things have to be followed as a first and foremost thing. Then, what investigations you will have to do a blood count as well as coagulation profile? Because I told you they may have coagulopathy. And polycythemia increases blood viscosity in thrombosis and infarction in cerebral and other plasmic uh, or pulmonary vessels can happen. Prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time usually derange in polycythemia. They, they may also have platelet dysfunction in hypofibrinogenemia, other factor differences. And if they have the hemoglobin as uh, 20 grams per deciliter with a uh, uh, hematocrit of uh, 60 or 70, preoperative phlegmotomy may be uh, required to reduce the viscosity and decrease the hematocrit. And dehydration must be corrected before the phlegmotomy in these cases. WBC count and C-reactive protein will give you a clue about whether any salt infection is present. And serum electrolyte should be checked in patients receiving diuretics because of cardiac failure. And ECG may show ventricular strain or hypertrophy. And echo is used for Doppler and color flow mapping for that R. Well, packet position is used for pressures to identify the pressures in various chamber and magnitude of front and the coronary anatomy can be altered in ASD or VSD because of the <coughs> location of the uh, communication. And uh, chest X-ray show position and size, atelectasis of the lung or acute respiratory infective bronchovascular marking and elevated hemidiaphragm and cardiologist evaluation. All these things are, uh, depends on the complexity of the lesion as I told you earlier, the four conditions. So these are all coming under the investigation. Intraoperative concentration, the Make sure that you, whenever you take up a complex uh, heart disease patient for non-cardiac surgery or a patient with symptoms or uncorrected congenital heart disease, you must have the adequate backup. So without that, it is very risky to take them up in a very small hospital without adequate backup. So SVR and PVR balance is the most important thing. As I told you, with the intravenous agents when you use, we must assess preoperatively whether the PVR is high and it is likely to supersede the SVR before you induce. So select the agent that will preserve the SVR so that the shunt does not get reversed. That's a very, very important concept that we have to keep in mind. And patients with poor cardiac function who require intraoperative, inotrop preoperatively, may not tolerate the injection and the, may require use of ketamine for this. And the invasive monitoring depends on the surgery and the type of lesion that the patient is having. A left to right shunt like atrial septal defect 
centrally effective to take PDA, AVC and all defects are all. Uh, they have minimal effect on inhalation or intravenous injection because the pulmonary circulation is receiving adequate blood to take up the inhalation agents. So there is no difference between inhalation agent and intravenous agent in the in these patients with left to right chest. And they need to access pulmonary flow. So patients are usually asynatic, but deterioration in gas exchange may result from pulmonary congestion. Whereas patients with right to left intracardiac lungs have a prolonged induction because they are oligemic lungs. They have poor circulation in the lungs, so they take a long time. Unless you have the blood to take up the inhalation agent, so it will not happen faster. So, uh, inhalation induction is the wrong choice for patients with right to left shunt, while well, IV induction is faster. And right to left shunt or shunt reversal when SVR are decreases or PVR increases. This is what uh, the question I was asked for. And hypercap cyanotic spells will be anesthesia response to volume increases in SV with alpha agonists such as phenylephrine or epidrine. And uh, reducing the infundibular spasm with beta blocker, especially in patients with pathology of talent. And pulse oximetry, overestimates arterial octane saturation, even as the uh, saturation decreases, and end carbon dioxide readings under the estimate PAO2. And discrepancy worsens with hypoxemia. This is in patients with pathology. Mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25 millimeters at rest and 35 millimeters during exercise is defined as pulmonary hypertension. This can be diagnosed using your echocardiograph and Doppler studies. So, initially, pulmonary hypertension is reactive in response to hypothermia, stress, pain, acidosis, etc. Later, it becomes fixed. So, it is very important whether uh, the pulmonary hypertension will be amenable to any treatment or whether it is a fixed one is a very important factor that we have to find out. So, the anesthetic goals in managing suspicion are to prevent any further increase in PVR and depression of myocardial infarctivity. The pulmonary hypertension crisis intervention measures are 100% oxygen, inhaled nitric oxide or phosphodiester in gas, prostacycline analogs, inotropes, and other measures to maintain cardiac output and pulmonary blood flow to be prepared and administered according to as the need arises. And patients with a single ventricle pathway may have gone through stages of palliation like quantum surgery or quantum procedure. And uh, oxygen saturation in these patients only will be 75 to 85% because of the mixing of both deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. And previous surgery scar, atrial or ventricular over dysfunction can trigger arrhythmia. Pain management is a critical factor and an anesthetic must cover during both intra and post-operative management because of the uh, location that I told. Opioid infusion or patient control analgesia for a older people who can understand to operate that for major operation is the primary post-operative intervention. And the use of regional anesthesia for well-compensated congenital heart disease is the quite right and recommended with no complications. Post-operative considerations are observing them in intensive care unit, the help of which will help in reduction of arrhythmias, cardiac ischemia, dehydration, pain, ventilator issues, and other complications because they cause detrimental effects. Okay. So, these are some of the points. And uh, Mutupriya has uh, nicely added what are all the agents, how you can safely use them, and that. That also you can incorporate in this uh, presentation so that it will be a uh, complete. Uh, answer for the question. Okay. Thank you.